Hey guys, Avi here, and welcome to this brand new video on passing data between view controllers with Swift 4 and Xcode 9. Let's get started. First thing first, we're going to go ahead and create a new Xcode project. The application that we're going to be building today is going to look something like this. Basically, it is a view. A view is going to ask you for two things, your name and a button. Once you enter in your name, guys, you're going to go ahead and click the done button. And then I'm going to pass in the name into our second view over here and say hi there and then the first name. Very, very simple application guys, but with this application, I'll be showing you how to pass data between one view to the other view. So let's go ahead and go back to our Xcode application. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize the view so that it fits inside of the screen. Fantastic, let me go ahead and expand it over here as well. Awesome job. We're gonna be creating a single view application guys, and I'm gonna call this pass data. You can go ahead and call it whatever you want and go ahead and give it an organization identifier. I'm gonna call it the codex, okay? So the codex.pass data, it already exists, replace, fantastic. And now everyone over here should have their Xcode project open. So what we're gonna be doing is first thing first, we're gonna look at this view and replicate it. We basically have two UI view controllers, one with a text field and a button, the other with just a UI label. So let's go back to our Xcode project, open up main.storyboard, and then inside of main.storyboard, we're gonna go ahead and add a UI text field. Let's search for text field over here and add that text field onto our project. Now, all a text field is, guys, it's basically an entry point for the user to add some text, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and add this text field. All right, I'm gonna expand it. And then if I tap on the text field and go to the attributes inspector over here, I'm gonna give it some placeholder text. I'm gonna say, enter your name here, all right? So very, very straightforward. We gave it a placeholder. This is our text field. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and throw in a button. Once the users entered in their text field, they're gonna go ahead and add or click on the button down below. So I'm gonna add a button over here. This is my button. Let me expand this. Fantastic, here's my button. And my button is just gonna hit done, all right? Now obviously you can make this UI look better. You could add colors, stuff like that. For now, just to make a very straight and very simple application, this is what we're gonna be doing. So here's our text field, guys. Here is our button. Let's go ahead and create the second view, another view controller. Just go ahead and search for a view and it should be the first one, this view controller over here. Go ahead and drag and drop this right next to our view. So we have view controller one and view controller two. And the second view controller, guys, we're gonna go ahead and add a label. So all we've done so far is first view, text field and a button, second view, a label. Very, very straightforward application, guys. Shouldn't be too hard. Over here is our label. I'm gonna go ahead and expand this so it fills up the entire view like that. Awesome, I'm gonna expand it a bit like that. Fantastic. Over here in the attribute inspector, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and center my font, increase the font size a bit, and change the font from system to Futura. That's just my preference. You can do whatever you want. There we go, fantastic. So now we have two views, guys. Our first view has the initial view where the user is going to go ahead and enter in their name and hit done. Our second view has the updated label with the content being passed from the first view to the second view. The last thing we have to do, guys, is connect all of these things to our code. So we have our view controller.swift and that's already linked up with this view controller. If you go ahead and select this text field, guys, and open up this um, sort of uh, assistant editor over here, you're gonna be able to see your design on the left and the code on the right. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw in my UI text field on the right hand side. Again, if you're confused about any of this, I highly suggest taking a look at my earlier iOS 11 development tutorials. They explain everything that's going on. I'm hoping you guys have a basic understanding of Xcode, stuff like that. That's why my pace might be a bit fast. But over here we have a UI text field, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and just call this text field, hit connect. This is my now outlet that's been created. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing for my button down below, except instead of an outlet, I'm gonna create an action. If you guys remember the difference between an outlet and an action, an outlet is for properties accessing that object, actions are for user interaction. So when the user taps on a button, we want a function to be called. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this done, hit connect. And now you guys should have two things added to your first view controller. We have a text field and we have our done function. Fantastic. The next thing we have to do guys is create the code for our second view controller. To do that, we first have to add that view controller.swift file to our project. So we're gonna go ahead and right click on pass data, click new file, and then select Cocoa touch class, all right? Once you have selected Cocoa touch class, 
you're going to go ahead and call this either second view controller. I'm just going to call this name view controller for now. Again, the name can be anything as long as you can remember it. Hit next. All right. I'm going to go ahead and create it in my project. Now everyone should have two view controllers, view controller .swift and name view controller .swift. Going back to our main nut storyboard, we have to go ahead and tell Xcode that, Hey, this view is going to be managed by this controller. Okay. So the way we can do that guys is by selecting this view over here, going into the third icon, which is basically your identity inspector. And then in the class section, pass in name view controller, go ahead and hit enter. And now we've basically told Xcode that, Hey, our name view controller class is going to control this view. The last thing you have to do guys is go ahead and select this label. Now, if you go ahead and open up this assistant editor, you can see that in the automatically it opens up name view controller .swift when we select the name view controller by doing that, we can now go ahead and right click or control click and drag across and add this label to our view controller. I'm just going to call this name label for now. Fantastic. So what we've done so far guys is we've created this view, the view that we've been meaning to create. We have our text field, we have our button, we have our label. The next thing we have to do is create the segue. What is a segue? You might ask a segue is basically um, an Xcode or a storyboard function that allows you to go from one view to another. You segue from a view. So what you're going to do guys is you're going to select this view, control click this yellow icon that you see over here and drag to the other side. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat that. You're going to go ahead and select this view, control click this yellow icon and drag to the other side or to the second view. If you let go, you're going to see all these different options. We're going to go ahead and say present modally. All right. Just go ahead and select that for now. And immediately you're going to see if I move this a bit, you see this arrow linking this view to this view. This is what we call a segue guys. And that's how all iOS applications work using segues. You can go from one view to another and that's how you see various views in the application. So this segue connects my first view controller to my name view controller. I'm going to go ahead and go into my attributes inspector and give my segue an identifier. So this identifier, I'm going to go ahead and just call this, um, I'm going to call it name. All right. Something very simple. And one last thing I forgot to do guys is I'm going to go ahead and remove any text from this label. We don't have to do this, but just to make our UI look nicer, we just remove the text from our label. So now we have our segue. It has an identifier of name. And now what we can do guys is we can go back to our view controller.swift and add the code to pass in the text field value to our second view controller. The way we're going to do that guys is very straightforward. Once the user hits done, we're going to get the variable of the text field. We're going to say, let name is equal to text field dot text. I'm actually going to call this name text to simplify. Let name text is equal to text field dot text. All this code does guys is it gets whatever text has been entered in the text field and stores it in our name text. After that, we're going to call the function perform segue with identifier. What this function does guys is it takes whatever segue you created in our case, our name segue and based on the, the identifier, which was a name, we're going to go ahead and call that identifier. So go ahead and say name sender self. All right. So perform segue with identifier name sender self, go ahead and actually initialize name text outside of the function. So we're going to actually over here, create a variable name text set it equal to a blank string for now. And then name text over here should equal text field dot text. So my bad on that guys, we didn't be able to access name text outside of this function. The reason for that being is because we're going to go ahead and call a function that's called whenever a segue is being triggered. In this case, perform segue with an identifier name. It gives an error over here, value of optional type string, not unwrapped. Basically what it's saying is that, Hey, you don't know if text field will exist, if whether it's going to have a text value or not. So we're just going to assume for now that whenever a user hits the done button, there is some text in the text field. Okay. So our done function right now has self dot name text is equal to text field dot text perform segue with identifier name sender self. Fantastic. The last thing you have to do guys is go ahead and call the function that's involved when you're preparing for a segue. So if you go ahead and type in prepare, it's going to be the first function prepare for a segue. Go ahead and open up that this function is called every single time a segue is called. And what we're going to be trying to do is we're going to set the variable in our name view controller equal to our name text variable over here. So going to our name view controller dot swift, go ahead and create a variable var final name is equal to a blank string. All right. 
Going back to our view controller.swift, we're gonna go ahead and say segue, or let's go ahead and say uh, var vc is equal to segue.destination, destination as name view controller, okay? And then we're gonna say vc dot name dot final name is equal to self dot name text. All right. So let me go ahead and quickly explain the code that we just wrote. Var vc is equal to segue dot destination. Every segue has a beginning point and an ending point. Going back to our main dot server, we can see that this is our beginning point. This is our ending point. It goes from point A to point B. So we're trying to access point B, get that view controller as type name view controller. And then we're setting the variable. We created a variable called final name inside of name view controller. We're setting the final name's content equal to self.name text. By doing so, once this function is called, if we go to our name view controller, final name will now have whatever we entered in the text field. And then all we have to do in our view did load function is say name label dot text is equal to final name. So very, very straightforward guys. Very, very simple. All we did to recap is we created a main dot storyboard with two views, one view to get the user content and hit the action button and another view to load that content, passing it from one view to another. In our view controller, we called a segue and then inside of the segue, we initialize the destination view controller and set the final variable. And then in our second view controller, all we did is once we got the value, we updated our label. So go ahead and run this code guys. And hopefully we will see passing data in action. All right, fantastic. So this is our view guys. I'm gonna go ahead and enter in my name over here, Avinash, hit done. And then we get Avinash over here. Now, the reason why we don't see hi there Avinash is because we didn't add that in our text. Go ahead and just say hi there, comma, and then plus final name. By doing that, we'll get the complete text of hi there, Avinash. Fantastic. Let's go back to our simulator. Here's our simulator. This is our application. Put in Avinash, hit done, and we get hi there, Avinash. Fantastic. So that is the gist of passing data between view, views, guys. You initialize the destination view controller in the prepare function of a segue, get the variables that you want to set set them with the values and that's it. Thank you so much for listening guys. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.